is going to be a tutorial on Audacity. Audacity is a free and open source cross-platform recording software that's available free online through this link. And all you have to do is click on download and it will work on pretty much any computer that you own. So this is if you want to use it at home. You want to go here and download it and install it. But for our purposes, you're going to find it under Applications. And it's going to be in a folder titled Audacity with the logo. And you're going to double click on the Audacity app. Okay, so that's going to open up. And you're going to get a window that looks kind of like this. It may ask you to import some plugins or may prompt you to do something before. If it asks you to do that, make sure you hit cancel, uh, especially in the lab, um, because it may crash. And um, you can hit OK and then see what happens. But I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna warn you twice. It's probably gonna crash. All right, let's go first through the interface and the menu. Now the interface is. Um, probably going to look very similar to this or if not identical uh, depending on the version that you download. To the left here we have our playback controls. Okay, These are like any other playback. You have pause, play, stop, rewind to the beginning, rewind to the end, and record. Okay, um, This is your toolbar. So we have uh, six different tools that we can choose from. We're really only going to use three um, for our purposes. These are your meters. This is your output meter and this is your input meter. Um, those will become handy just to make sure that we're not um, being too loud and distorting. Okay, This gives you some meter preferences. These are your levels. Your output level and your input level. For the most part these are just going to stay where they are unless things are really too, too quiet you can change your output volume. These are your editing tools here. This is what's called sync lock, and that is um, something that we're not going to use. And then these are our zoom or our view tools. Okay, Down here is where you select what is your audio host. Um, that's something that will become important if you're trying to use something other than built-in. As you see, I, that's what I'm doing here. I'm using the Ensemble. You can also change it to built-in or any other device that you have. And this allows me to select my, how many input channels I have right now. I'm just using one, and that's it. All right, this is our timeline here. This tells us literally how long in increments of, of seconds, um, and then eventually milliseconds, that we have in our files. Down here tells us our project sample rate. And then our um, these are some things that we're not going to use, but allows you to snap the um, position of your cursor. All right, up here is our menu. And if we start here, Audacity menu has really only one useful thing, which is either to quit or preferences. If we click on our preferences, you'll see it open up, just like any other software program, ways of, of customizing our, our uh, software in various ways and I'm not going to talk you through that unless there's a major problem you normally don't need to go into this so I'm just gonna hit OK and exit. We have our file menu this is where we're going to either create a new uh, project, save our project, import it, it's where we'll edit our project. Um, normally we don't really use this menu very much. This is our view menu where you have some things that we can look at like our mixer board and uh, zooming, our transport control. This is where we can add new tracks. Okay, generate any sort of uh, basic sounds. Apply effects to our audio. Analyze our audio, and window management. There's also help, which will um, often direct you to a web browser for help, and that's really useful if you can't do something. All you got to do is do the quick help, and normally you'll find a way to do it. All right, let's import some audio. There's two ways to import audio. One is you go to File, and down to Import, and you choose Audio. And it's going to prompt you to find a folder. This is our folder. 
I'm going to do uh, Chernobyl train. Okay, it's going to give you this warning. All this is saying is that we prefer that you make a copy of the file before editing. What that does is it copies the audio from your folder into Audacity so that when you edit anything, it doesn't change the original file. That's called destructive editing. That's a very, very important thing that you don't do. All right, so it copied our file. Now let's just test it. Okay, so it works. All right, let's look at our track here. Notice that there's two waveforms. That means it's stereo. So we have one waveform for the left speaker and one for the right speaker. This is our, essentially the um, volume is scaled to uh, zero to one or negative one. And so anything above one is distortion. Anything below negative one is distortion and zero is silence. So it's kind of giving you an idea of how loud things get over time. All right, on the left here, we have the mute button. This will basically mute it. We don't hear anything. And the solo button. If you hit solo, we don't have another track in there. So let's get one. And this will show the other way that you can um, get audio in, which is just drag it and the same thing happens. All right, if I hit solo, it mutes all the other tracks. So now I only still hear just this one. Or I can hear both at the same time by unclicking solo. Okay, this is our volume uh, slider. There's a better um, way to do this and I'll show you later. And this is our panning. So if we want it to be all the way in the left speaker, we would just move it left or just a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, okay? So if right now I'm gonna keep it centered because it's already in stereo. All right, the last thing is that you have this sub menu of your track called the track menu. It's where you can change its name, okay? It's already got a unique name, so I'm gonna keep it. You can move your track down so it slides it down, move it back up. You can change the way that the waveform looks. So you can change it to a spectrogram, which is telling you the intensity of the frequency over time, or a pitch chart, which there's not a lot of pitch, so there's not a lot of anything. But we're gonna stick with waveform for now. It's the most simplified way of viewing your audio. This gives you some information about how you can split your track into two mono tracks or into a stereo track. It allows you to set your um, bit rate, sorry, your bit depth, and then your uh, sample rate here. All right. Now you can see that I can resize my tracks by just going to the bottom of each track and I get a new uh, mouse cursor that allows me to shrink it to a very tiny size or to a very large size, depending on my preference. That's a really quick way to get everything to, um, to fit. You can also go to your view and do fit vertically and it will snap everything to the screen, which is a good way if you start importing lots of things you wanna see them all, it's a quick way to get there. All right, let's edit our audio. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this Swiss train for now. If I click that X, it goes away forever. Editing audio is as simple as basically selecting the audio with your mouse. Just like you would in a text document. You click with your cursor tool selected and you drag and it should change a different color. Now up here in the timeline it's showing you how long you've dragged. Okay. And it also shows you that information down here. All right, now we can go to our edit tools here. If I wanted to cut that particular section of audio out, I would just hit cut and it's gone. I can hit undo if I want it to come back just the way it was. Um, I can copy it. And then if I wanted to paste it somewhere, I can even paste it on a new track if I just click off of it and hit paste. Look at that, and there it is. 
I can do these also with shortcuts. So on your keyboard, the copy shortcut is Command C, just like in text. Command C, copy. I'm going to select somewhere inside the track. Command V is paste. V as in very, 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 very good. And Command Z as in zoo is undo. Okay. Now, if I want to cut something out, I hit Command X. And there it goes. Command Z to undo. So Command C. There we go. Command C copies. Command V pastes. Command X cuts. And Command Z undo. And you can keep undoing for a while until you get back to the state that you want it to be in. So that's um, quick editing. Let's just say I wanted just this little bit of audio right here. And if I hit spacebar, I can listen to it. I can also stop and start it. Right? If I just wanted that little bit, it's got a really short amount. Yeah, let's zoom in. This is where we're going to zoom, use our zoom tool. Now you can see the timeline gets smaller. I'm actually going to, let's zoom in really tight here and get a small amount. Perfect. All right. Now I can get rid of everything in the audio um, track. If I go here, I can resize it by just clicking on this, which will basically trim our audio down completely. Now look at that. Let's go and zoom in just a little bit so we can see it better. Now I'm going to change my tool to the trim. Sorry, the time shift tool. And I'm going to slide this all the way to the beginning. Let's zoom out now. There we go. There we go. So now it's at the very beginning. And what I'm going to do is just copy it and then paste it one after the another. And this doesn't have, um, Audacity doesn't have any way of like making um, beats out of, um, there's no like grid or anything like that. You have to kind of do it by eye or by ear. But I'm just going to make a really simple beat here. All right, let's just make, let's just say I like that. Now, there's one thing that's wrong with it though. We're going to zoom in just a bit here. There we go. You can hear that there's a bit of a clip at the end, sort of a pop. Let's line this up just a bit better. I'm going to go right with uh, timing there. Just keep it honest. There we go. All right. Now, I probably should have done this before I copied it, but let's just do it a um, couple times just so we can understand. Um, I want to create a little bit of a fade at the end of this file here so that it doesn't have that clipping sound. And I'm going to just click and drag at the end and go to my effect menu. And I'm going to fade out. All right. So now you can see this one faded out. I can either delete these and then just copy this one or I can do the effect on all of them. And that's what I'm going to do just to practice this. And you can see this multiple times. Fade out. Fade out. All right. So now let's listen to it. There we go. So now that clip is gone, and we should probably zoom in just a little bit more and do that to the beginning, but really, really short fade in. Just like a hair. There we go. And we'll apply fade in. All right, now it should be 
working pretty well. All right, good. Let's zoom out just a little bit here. Let's add in a new file here. All right. So now I just want to take this little bit here and I'm going to hit trim. I'm going to go to my time shift and I'm going to move it all the way over there and then I'm going to click this button here which basically fits the project to the window. There we go. I'm going to add in a quick fade in and then a fade out at the end and now I'm going to select the whole track. I'm going to add an effect for the entire audio um, on this track. And I'm going to change its speed. Now change speed will change its speed and then subsequently change its pitch, just like a, a record or a tape. I'm going to change it to something pretty fast here, around 40%. Let's preview that. Perfect. Let's try that. Hit OK. Now it applies the effect. That's one thing about Audacity that's different than uh, pro programs like Logic or Pro Tools is that it applies the effect directly to the audio as opposed to at the bounce um, stage, which we'll get to in just a few minutes. Okay, so now the audio is completely affected. What I'm going to do is just for fun, I'm going to copy these here. I'm going to paste them in later. There we go. And let's go to the beginning and listen to it. All right, great. Now, the last tool I'm going to show you is this tool here, which is called the Envelope Tool. And this works really well if, for example, I want to kind of have this um, beat fade out a little more dramatically and stepwise here. It's a cool little um, thing that I've only ever seen in Audacity. But you can also do it, make multiple points, kind of like automation in, that we'll get to in Logic. But you can see I can, I can shape, this is shaping the volume of the track. Right, so it's only really useful um, if you want some sort of dynamic shaping. Otherwise, for fading in and fading out, it's not very useful. All right, now if we go back, you'll see it kind of shows you the envelope via the dark patch. Now let's listen to see how that changed. All right, now we have some dynamic qualities to our audio. Perfect. Now, let's just say we really liked what we did here and we want to um, save our project and then export it. Well, we go to our file and you're gonna do save project as. It's gonna warn you that this is only a project that will work in Audacity. When you save it, you're not actually saving the audio file, you're saving all of the stuff that you've done in Audacity. And so this is simply so that you can open it up again in Audacity by clicking on this thing here, the Audacity project file. Right? Um, this is not what you will turn in. This is simply so that when you come back later, you can continue editing exactly the way that you had it here. All right. Once you've saved it though, now we actually want to export our audio so that we can turn this part in. And that's export. Okay, export actually will bounce or mix everything down to a stereo audio file. Okay, so we're gonna call this test. I'm gonna hit save. It's gonna say, your tracks will be mixed down. That's exactly what we want, hit okay. It'll allow you to enter metadata. So you can enter in your name, title, whatever you want. 
and this is will literally be read by your iPod or your iTunes or whatever. It doesn't affect the file at all. And there it is. There's our file. It's about five megabytes. And um, you can test it if you want. Perfect. So this would be what you turned in is the dot, the dot wave. These two, once you're done with them, I don't want anything to do with these. These are for you only. I'm actually going to put them in the trash. All right. That's Audacity for Beginners. Mm -hmm.